Hi guys, this is Alex and welcome to series one, episode five of this tutorial series, H Soundworks Scores. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the mixing techniques I've used, including certain compressors, EQs, reverbs, etc. Why I've used them and certain tips and tricks that you can maybe pick up. Normally I would bounce these stems out into Pro Tools and mix them from there, but for the sake of preventing any confusion and things like that, I'm just gonna be sticking to mixing in Cubase. So let's go. So most of the mix changes that were made here were really subtle and um, mostly EQ and compression, just kind of very subtly applying them on like individual tracks and buses and things like that. So the first thing I did obviously after I wrote all the string parts was I kind of wanted to firstly put a reverb on it and put a little bit more space into it. I, um, I wouldn't normally start off with just putting on reverb for this particular type of music with the uh, very orchestral and classical influence. I wanted to give a little bit more room and a little bit more space. So I sent that to a... Um, to a Universal Audio EMT plate, and uh, I absolutely love this plate reverb. I think it sounds amazing. I don't do a lot with the EQ, but if I will, sometimes I'll take out some of that low end if I need to, just to make sure that it's not too overpowering in that low and low mid range. So um, that was actually the first thing I did. I wouldn't normally do that if I was just doing like a normal contemporary mix or something like that. I wouldn't just put on reverb, but in this particular case, I wanted to give it a little bit more expression and a little bit more space so um that was the first thing i did on the strings and it really richened all of them up it sounded really nice and um i actually put very subtle compression on the strings which you wouldn't really expect it's an la2a from um from universal audio and uh it's an opto compressor which basically means that it's kind of got a little bit of a slower attack so for something like strings it needs that natural slow attack in order to get that natural sound. Like you wouldn't use something like a FET compressor or a VCA just because of the sharp attack for, for things like kick drums and snares and things like that. But no, this is strings. It needs a slow, gentle attack and then just to bring it down a little bit through the peak reduction. So I did that. It's, it's very subtle, but um, I'll show you what that sounds like in the main string section here where the rest of the strings join in. And this is also you know, the reverb as well. So it took a little bit of tweaking on the peak reduction to um, to achieve just a little bit of gain reduction on the VU meter there. So um, it really gives very subtle qualities. It kind of brings out the fullness of the sound a little bit. Um, I put up that gain a tiny bit, but it really kind of just very subtly enhances it. So I really like that addition to the whole string bus. And I also did some EQ on various strings as well. So uh, possibly the most substantial one was in the second half. Um, where we hear this melody played from the... So already that's quite a nasally quality sounding cello, as I'll discuss in the next few episodes, but it did need a little bit of EQ, just some subtractive in that low mid-range, because obviously that with those pads and that piano in there, incredibly rich in that low and low mid-range, about 200 to 300 hertz, they're quite rich in that area. So I needed to take some of that out in that cello and bump it up about 2K, 2 or 3K. So um, that, that gave it even more nasally quality, but that kind of stuck out in the mix, it cut through. So that's um, what I wanted to achieve on this particular cello in the second section. But um, yeah, aside from all the kind of very subtle EQ changes that I've made on on a few of them, not a lot, but um, I also wanted, also had to pan them. So yeah, um, as you can see, I have to take that that picture away. Um, yeah, as you can see, just kind of your subtle changes in the violins, so having them left and having the duplicate of the violin left, that's played on a, on a separate string library. Uh, the cello's right and the double bass is a little bit right as well. I didn't go crazy, crazy mad on it because obviously I needed to make some space for other instruments in there. But um, that was like, I generally pan them in the position of an orchestra for extra realism, I feel that. If you're gonna replicate this sort of sound with sample libraries, then you need to try and be ultra, ultra realistic or as realistic as you possibly can. So that was the main processing that I applied on the strings.
Yeah, so the most important part in the second section from a mixing perspective was to really make sure that that low end was not too muddy or too overpowering. So a couple of subtractive EQ techniques were used to try and clean that up. So on this pad that you see here, it's very dominating in the low register. It's very it's very powerful, it's very underlying, and it just plays a very big role, but we couldn't let that be too overpowering. So um, I, I low passed this Hallium pad by quite, quite yeah, substantially at 300 hertz. And um, I didn't do much in this Albion pad, but it definitely gave quite a bit of sub. So um, all in all, in those two pads already, we have quite a lot of low end and quite a lot of sub, but with this felt piano, it's a very rich yeah, sounding piano. So we still wanted to have that headroom and space it, spectrally that space in between these two instruments otherwise it would have just got muddy and it would have just completely ruined the second section so um it's quite it's quite subtle but this particular one without any eq on the piano okay just a little bit you can hear it in that that top end there at about 4k so I took it out in that low mid range by a little bit just because with that pad there that it was just a little bit too muddy there was just too much low end it was a bit too overwhelming so especially I wanted to take that out leave some headroom for that pad and then increase it at about 4k by about 2 dB and add some air as well air is anything from 10k to 20k it just gives a little bit more brightness to the sound but that's why we call it air so um yes i took that out there in the piano just to give it a little bit more space in the whole mix and just to clean it up a little bit and then i also sent it to a reverb as well which is the uad emt 140. Sounds like sorry there you go something like this So that's it for the techniques that I used on the piano and the pads. After this is mixed, yeah, I've got my friend Guy McNamara from Mode Mastering to master this, who put on the finishing touches and really brought out the mix. So that's it for series one of this tutorial series, H Soundworks Scores, talking through my first rescore to the title sequence of BBC4 crime and drama series called The Bridge. Now join me for series two, where I'll be diving deep into the sampling, synthesis and sound design experimentation to really come up with some cool sounds, textures and combinations. So I'll see you then.